It is topping our news now at noon. The eclipse. Some have broadcast me. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. A total solar eclipse will make history as it sweeps across America. And as always, local four has you covered. Dr. Frank McGeorge is live at the Cranbrook Institute of Science. That's in Bloomfield Hills here closer to home with a look at all the excitement that's happening there. And Ben Bailey is down in Hopkinville, Kentucky, the site of the greatest totality with the eclipse lasting two minutes and 41 seconds. So let's go to Ben in Hopkinsville. Ben, is there a big crowd out there so far where you are? There is and there isn't, uh, at Rod, to be quite honest with you. I was expecting there to be more people, a little bit more excitement. It's kind of a more workmanlike attitude. This field, for the most part, is filled with scientists and media and VIPs right now. Behind me, you can see the white chairs on the other side of that fence. That's where the general public is gathering. And up until this point, it's been very subdued. But I can tell you, once we get closer to 2 o'clock Eastern time, it's going to be popping. How's the man in the moon cut his hair? He clips it. This Minnesota family came prepared. They even decorated the family car to the moon. Yeah, my family brought these down. <laughs> As you can imagine, this place is crawling with scientists. It's probably uh, like a once in a lifetime event. A 400 millimeter uh, fixed focal length with a 2x extender. I will see now that I'm an adult, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see, I'll, I'll, I think it will blow me away. All these different things that just aren't normal, uh, but kind of show the majesty and wonder of, of just nature. Both the mayor and the governor are here. Good to see you. Good and you. And you dialed in the perfect day, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it sort of just looks like scratch. And of course, joined by other VIPs. This is a view of the sun live right now in the hydrogen alpha frequency. But it doesn't matter who you are. We are all getting an opportunity to witness a once in a lifetime experience. And we have been preparing. We've been rehearsing. We have got our glasses on. We've looked at the sun. That's good to go. Now we just need the darn thing to happen, Everett. Yeah, we certainly do. Uh, in terms of the forecast and the weather out there, how are things looking? Here it's looking fantastic. We've seen almost crystal clear skies, just a couple thin clouds that have been floating around. The heat has really been the biggest weather concern. Uh, we're expecting heat index readings to reach 105 this afternoon, so we're hopefully keeping everybody hydrated. Let's take a look at the forecast here in Detroit. Some good news. A lot of that cloud cover that we were looking at and anticipating is here, but it's high and thin. So that's actually going to help uh, look, uh, help us be able to better see the eclipse once it happens a little bit later on. As far as temperatures go, we'll go from 86 at 1 o'clock. Temperatures dropping to 83 as we see that partial solar eclipse and then uh, bouncing back to the upper 80s with heat index readings in the low 90s. So definitely toasty, but looking a little bit better than what we had seen earlier on in the morning. I tell you what, let's go out to uh, Cranbrook where our Dr. Frank McGeorge is standing by and I bet the excitement's starting to build out there, Frank. He is uh, actually going to he's going to be joining us very shortly from what I can only imagine is a very geeked up Cranbrook at this point. Very similar to what we're seeing here uh, with all the scientists uh, that have gathered, including NASA. So we have Dr. Frank McGeorge. Let's go out to him at Cranbrook right now. Frank, what's uh, the latest out there? How's the excitement? Well, you know, everybody is really excited, I have to say, Ben. And I will also mention, I am incredibly jealous of you getting to cover the eclipse from the path of totality. I want your job. Mine is still pretty good, though. This is a must-see event locally with 80% coverage. Now, watching the eclipse safely does take some preparation, though. First and foremost, do not look directly at the sun without special eclipse glasses like these, not even for a second. And if you are not able to get the glasses and you cannot find them, here is plan B. Make the old school pinhole box. Now this is really simple and it took me literally three minutes just to get as large a box as you can. You cut a hole in one end and tape a piece of tin foil over the hole. Then use a pin to make a very small hole in the foil and it is done. You hold the box so the foil is pointed at the sun behind you and you look at the side opposite the foil and you will see a small glowing disc. 
That is the sun. Now, the locally, the eclipse is going to begin shortly after 1 and be maximum shortly after about 2 o'clock. So that's the best viewing time. Now, another safety point I want to mention, do not take a selfie with the sun over your shoulder. First of all, the reflected sun off your screen is still going to be too bright for your eyes. Second, the sun is going to be too small and too bright to even bother risking either your camera or your eyes. So do not take a selfie during the eclipse. Now, we've posted instructions for making your own pin whole box on clickondetroit.com. Reporting live from the Cranbrook Institute of Science, I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Good luck viewing the eclipse. Back to you. Absolutely. We are definitely looking forward to it. Hopefully everybody's got their glasses or they can stop by the places that are still providing them. Uh, of course, you want to stay with us here on Local 4. We're going to be on the air when the peak eclipse time here in Detroit hits at 227 in the afternoon. And a reminder, you just saw Ben Baylor's report. He's going to be continuing to report from Hopkinsville, Kentucky all afternoon.